Hey, my friends, by now you know my take that corporate is a tool in service of the life you want. We don't want it to overtake our lives. And while we treat corporate as a tool, as a utility, and we put that thing on autopilot to deliver what we need, our greatest opportunities financially, purpose-wise, relationships, everything is external out there in the world. And you might not have tested yourself too much there. I can appreciate that. But you see this happening all the time online when people shift from being narrowly focused in a W-2 type position, and then they shift externally, building something of their own, building a business of their own, unlocking therefore a lifestyle that they only could have dreamed of before. And don't get me wrong, this takes real work. In my coaching program, we talk about this all the time. Many of the episodes that we have in the past here on Uncage Yourself actually go through step by step how to bring your entrepreneurial journey to life. And of course, we workshop that and make it real in the program. But in reality, there's a couple big things you have to do. And out of the gate, when you focus externally, like you pivot yourself 180 away from your corporate job, that thing stays on autopilot, but you look externally. People will tell you, go build a personal brand or go find your niche or niche if you're from Canada or somewhere else. And the problems with those things are pretty rampant. And today what we're going to do is tear down the notion of personal branding and finding your niche and really talk about a more intelligent, lucrative and fun model, which I call building your personal category. Let's dive in. Growing up, society taught you to follow the script by choosing a career path and climbing the ladder. But for many people, this promise falls flat. Work suffocates them and life becomes painful. Here, you're trapped in what I call the corporate cage. Fortunately, there's a way out. You can take control of your corporate job and unlock a life of freedom. I call this living uncaged. Hi, this is your host, Matt Doan. I'm a coach, creator, and entrepreneur. Uncaging people is my mission because it's been my exact life journey. This show provides you the stories, principles, and tactics to make it happen. Welcome to Uncage Yourself. There's nothing personal about climbing the corporate ladder. You simply follow the rules. You select a default path. You earn the associated credentials. You beg gatekeepers to choose you. And then once you're inside, you do what your job description says. There's not a lot of room to maneuver, to be yourself, to just unleash all that you are. And don't get me wrong, there are certainly benefits to this, but it's also the modern factory life. It is completely impersonal. You might know the downsides of this strategy quite well. You might be feeling right now that you want off this path because it's too constraining. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't enable the time freedom, financial freedom, and life that you want for you and your family. So your head might be looking towards entrepreneurship. It's a natural evolution. You might be thinking about using your skills, your superpowers to start a one-person business to get something off the ground, even while still in corporate. It's a great place to start. I talk about it all the time. And while this seems sexy, when it talks about all that time freedom, ownership, and uncapped income, you see it all the time on social media, it's not that simple. Building something of your own is very hard. It takes guts, grit, perseverance. Anyways, Say you have all those things and you still want it. So you start exploring what it takes. You go down the rabbit holes. You look at YouTube videos, listen to podcasts like these. You look on LinkedIn and other social sites. And there's this one must have thing that you see again and again, which is about being the face of your new business, where you as the single owner founder represents all that it stands for. And all the gurus out there will tell you to Go be your authentic self, share your stories, choose a niche, build a personal brand. Essentially, long and short is go differentiate yourself. Now, that makes sense and it's all well-meaning advice, but it puts you in a tough spot because here's the truth. Hear me now. No one cares about you. 
Maybe your family does, okay? <laughs> but no one else out there cares about you. Yes, those are harsh words, but you need to hear it and internalize this. Humans are wired to only care about themselves. Deep down, we only care about solving our own problems. It's not our fault that we feel that way. That's the genetic code that was handed down to us. So this me, me, me approach of building a personal brand will fall short because it's not fully designed to serve the audience you want to serve. Go look on Instagram. Go look at people flashing their life, how great things are. It doesn't feel good when you see that, right? What do you feel? Envy, jealousy, anger even? That's not the right way to go about this. When you're looking to build a business, something that's a full expression of you and what you're meant to do, your calling in this world, don't go about building a personal brand. And again, this is a, a mindset shift at the core. Now, don't get me wrong. You can and still must be very personal, but we need a smarter approach. So instead of crafting a personal brand, do this. Design a personal category. It's a subtle yet significant difference. Something I learned from the legendary Category Pirates, a group of expert authors and marketers that really champion the idea of creating categories, new places in this world where new work is being done. For example, there's a new company called Lomi that came to life in the last few years, and they created the new category of countertop home composting. You know where you have all those shreds of bananas or eggshells or fruits, vegetables, and you just throw them away. It's not good for the environment. And we don't all have the space or drive to go create a huge compost pile in our backyards, right? So they created countertop home composting, something that is a little machine that sits on your countertop. And everyone can do it, even small apartments. It's good for the environment, turns out good soil that you can use in a garden, even very environmentally friendly. That did not exist as a category in this world. Hey, Matt here with a quick message. If you've got an impressive job on paper, but it's making you miserable, listen up. I want to teach you to leverage your corporate career for entrepreneurial freedom. Create a new life chapter by rapidly improving your income, time, and happiness. All in service of a life that'll make your future self and your family proud. So head on over to uncagedworkshop.com. There you'll find a short video training on exactly how to do this. You won't be sorry. That's uncagedworkshop.com. All right, back to the show. There was no such thing as countertop home composting. They created the category. And of course, from there, copycats will come about, but they established that category. They became the kings or queens of that category. And now everything after that is a copycat, not as good, not number one. That's the same essence from a personal category standpoint, where what we're trying to do is build a personal category that is your real estate, but it's not about you. Stay with me here. This is a virtualized space that you frame, name, and claim, just like Lomi did with countertop home composting, that category, those three words put together in that order, repeatedly championed, did not exist before. You have to go through your own version of that as you frame your personal category. So first you frame it. You want to articulate the problem and the better future that you're championing in a fresh new way. So frame it put bounds around it, understand what goes in that box. Then we name it. We want to use memorable languaging so that you start to get people to understand your frame. Use clear but clever language, right? So we talk about Lomi for a second. Right now, I've been honing my personal category for years. My latest version of that is leveraging corporate for entrepreneurial freedom. There's an A to B transformation that I'm talking about for people. I'm inviting people into this category, this space where, okay, you're in corporate. We don't want to toss aside all that you've built. We want to pull forward, extract, leverage the good parts, the skills, the experiences, the reputation, and then use that as the launch pad to then go build entrepreneurial freedom, which is 
you creating a business of your own design to enable a lifestyle freedom that you didn't have before. So that took a lot of languaging, not saying it's perfect, always testing that, but that's where I am right now from a personal category. And you can see from these podcasts to newsletters to social media posts, I inject this language and this concept into my work almost daily because I deeply believe in the magnificent potential of leveraging your corporate past to build entrepreneurial freedom in your life. We don't want to just escape it. You notice I don't use the word escape because that implies a certain mentality, a emotional rage quit or something. We don't want to do that. It's very nuanced. And this is human psychology at play right here. While it appears simple, I've put a lot of thought and testing into my own category. But let me reemphasize, what I'm building is not about me. Notice I'm talking about a place where new things are happening, a new future is created. And I talk about that future again and again. And yes, while this might be published by Matt Doan's LinkedIn account or whatever, it's not about me. I'm just amplifying the message, making it a possibility in people's minds. Some other category examples, my friend Christopher Nelson, he has one where it's around helping you build wealth with tech equity. Cody Sanchez, she's about using contrarian thinking to build cash flow with boring businesses. This whole category right there. Or my friend Maurice Philogene, helping you try life on, helping you create principles in your life to have a designed life, one of intention, one where you really push yourself and don't sit back and let life happen to you. All of these folks are inviting people into a new category. Notice it's not a personal brand. It's not a niche. Think of personal brand as that Instagram highlight reel that we talked about before, where it says, look at me, look at all the great things I have. It's pretty nauseating, right? Like it doesn't work well when you receive it. You might find these pangs of jealousy, but it doesn't bode the best way, right? In the long run, that strategy, while it creates eyeballs on you, on your work, on your business, it can actually backfire and repel the very people that you aim to serve. And I know because you're listening to this podcast, you have this deep-seated mission, purpose inside of you that you're working to uncover, unleash, and go serve people and feel purposeful, impactful, changing lives, individuals, groups. And then there's the idea of the niche, right? Where people say, go find your niche. The problem with that is you're letting yourself enter a highly competitive game. You're setting yourself up for failure. For example, say you want to be a life coach and you label yourself as, hi, I'm so-and-so, the life coach, or a real estate developer, or a technology consultant. You are one of thousands, if not millions. From a human psychology standpoint, Choosing to enter into an existing niche makes you a dime a dozen. You become a commodity player in the minds of those you seek to serve. You'll naturally be battling the entrenched players who are far better resourced and way more well-established for years or decades with brands that shine farther than we can even imagine. And when you get into this state of choosing a niche and then saying me too, you'll just struggle to be either better, faster, or cheaper than them. And it'll destroy you because it's a very difficult game to play and get the attention that you deserve and deliver the value you know you're meant to bring. So that's personal brand. That's choosing a niche. Not good ideas. I hope you see where I'm going with that logic. Personal category though, when we design our personal category, that's different. This is when you're blending your deepest beliefs with a selfless transformational promise of a better future. When you have this, you have gold. Again, mine is helping people leverage corporate for entrepreneurial freedom. It's an A to B transformational promise. I'm talking about a different future that's different from what most people are talking about out there, and I'm leaning into it with particular language. And it's this beautiful combination where your humanity plus your unique vision of a future is your personal category and you're creating the space and you're inviting people in. So instead of personal branding or just choosing a niche, we say, here's this awesome new future over here. Do you see what we're doing? It's not for everyone, but it might be for you. Do you want to come join us? 
Now, most people will opt out and say, ah, it's not for me. I don't vibe with that. But the right people, when you reach to them consistently, clearly, the right people will opt in. This leads me to my last point. Having your personal category is freedom. Once you've designed it well, and again, it takes lots of iterations. It's not going to happen overnight. But when you get there, when you've built this sandbox for yourself, you get to let loose your category, your rules. You establish sharp lines. You've framed it. You've named it. You've claimed it. And here in this space that you're championing, you communicate bold perspectives, stuff that people need to hear. You get it out there. You tell the truth that you know your people need to hear. You offer the solutions, the value, the promise of that better future. And again, the right people will join you with enough grit and consistency. And when you have this personal category that you've designed, it's a very freeing and potentially lucrative strategy from a professional standpoint. Think of it like this. You've been in corporate for a long time. You're hitting the top of the ladder. You're capping out on the salary increases. There's only so much room at the top. It's kind of a scary position. You could be deemed overqualified, expendable. Then what? This is why you need to start building, designing your personal category right now. This is your off-ramp and your growth into the future in exponential ways where you leverage your corporate pass and then you create a personal category, which is a vehicle and your business creates the freedom, income, and impact you've always hoped for. That's why we create the personal category. Funny enough though, I found that this conviction, this dedication to a personal category also carries over into your personal life. People start to see you as standing for something. You're no longer just a robot claiming I'm so-and-so VP at this company. No, you actually are one of the few people in this world that stand for something and are willing to create your own category and associated business with it. Think how you'll show up at that next Thanksgiving meal when you're talking with friends over drinks, when you catch up with a parent. What have you been working on? This is what I've been building. People start to admire what you're building. They sense it and they start to go, wow, that is an impressive, powerful person making a difference, taking a stand in this world for people who need it. Can you imagine what it'll feel like to show up with a well-defined personal category every day? You have these subconscious values that start to guide you. You start to say yes and no to certain things, no to most of the stuff, yes to a very few things that actually align to your vision, your personal category you're creating in this world. It's so empowering. Once they create their category and we workshop it, we fine tune it, we test it. Once they have it, they are on fire because they speak with a boldness. They take action with boldness. They show up at home sharper, more present. It's pretty crazy how this works. The effects on you both professionally and personally once you've designed your personal category. Because at this point, you're no longer playing the default games that you've been assigned by other people. Again, in a corporate system, Climbing those ladders, hitting those marks, that's you playing another person's game. And it's begun to make you miserable. Now, when you create your own personal category, even if you're still running a corporate job in the background on autopilot, you're building and playing your own game. So hear me really clearly. Don't build a personal brand. Don't go try to find your niche. Design your personal category. And again, this is core, absolutely foundational to what we do. In my coaching program, in the group settings, when we workshop, this is foundational where you leverage all your superpowers that you've uncovered and you ask yourself, what's the category I'm meant to create where I feel alive, purposeful, of service, where it's lucrative from a market standpoint? To get started there, I suggest booking a breakthrough call with us over at matthewdone.com forward slash talk. All of my clients that come through and actually start creating that category This was their first step. And when you book that call, we'll do three things together. Number one is we'll look at your current work situation to understand what's working, not working, and why. Secondly, we'll then get clarity on what you do want instead for both career and life. And we might talk about that personal category piece. And thirdly, we'll get exact clarity on the game plan for moving forward to unlock and build that category and therefore the business and lifestyle you're truly craving. So you can book that call at matthewdone.com forward slash talk. We hope to see you soon. But just stepping back, I hope you understand the nuance here. 
and the massive opportunity of you committing to building a personal category that you frame, name, and claim. Get after it, my friends. We'll chat soon. Hey, Matt here. Thanks for listening to Uncage Yourself. For show notes and more content like this, head over to uncageyourself.fm. And if you liked what you heard, I'd appreciate you leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Until next time, be well, my friend.